My name is Mark Misson. I'm Head of Manufacturing Operations at Roslyn CT site uh, in Edinburgh. I'm going to say a few words about cell and gene therapy, drug product manufacturing and the road to commercialization and the excitement that comes along um, with it. First of all, the company part. Um, so we're based in Edinburgh, Scotland and Boston in Massachusetts. We're a transatlantic clinical and commercial cell and gene therapy manufacturing capacity. We have 22 um, GMP suites across the two continents. We're manufacturing the world's first CRISPR edited gene therapy product and we re have recently received commercial license in the US and in Europe for that product. We have a dynamic, young, highly experienced team of 350. When I started four years ago, there was 40 people in the company in Edinburgh. We now have 240 people in the company in Edinburgh. So we've grown extremely rapidly. We're innovation focused. We have proprietary stem cell and genome editing platform, and we're private equity backed, um, planning for significant additional growth moving forward. So the road to commercial approval. Um, I'm going to talk from having the plan um, through process performance qualification, the inspection, and then scaled out planning and life cycle management. So just some of my experiences, some of our experiences um, over the last two to three years. First part, have a plan. Start thinking about it early. With fast track approvals, it can come quicker than you think. Expect the plan to grow and expect it to change in all directions constantly. Prepare the team um, to be agile. Prepare the team for this experience because it, it is a big job. Think how you're going to manage it. Some companies that I've worked for have considered the task force approach. With Roslyn CT, um, we didn't do that actually because realistically, the workload, the amount of work, the input affects the whole company. And if it doesn't affect the whole company, there's probably something wrong. So we took a very holistic approach with streaming of work, 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 but nevertheless involving virtually everyone uh, within the site. So really now going through the different topics, the different considerations, starting with analytics, raw materials, risk assess the raw materials that are being used in the process, move away from paper-based raw materials, um, typically before phase three, assess the crit criticality to process, define incoming test requirements, evaluate your in-house and contractor capability and start to gather your thoughts in terms of a raw material qualification program. Bearing in mind that for these type of products, it's not so easy to get three manufacturers lots. This is something that you need to start early, probably in, in our experience, the first thing you need to start, two to three year program potentially. Final product testing, assure all the methods in-house and contractor are qualified. process lock. Aim to have a process lock about six months before PPQ. Plan to have commercial batch records in time for PPQ. Migrate all the normal acceptable ranges, proven acceptable ranges in process controls from development process limits evaluation work into your commercial batch records expect last minute changes. We had process lock, then we had process lock, then we had process lock. So again, be agile, but plan for a process lock well before your PPQ if you can. Expect to be able to manage multiple change controls, complicated change management under tight timeline um, while still manufacturing clinical batches. Be prepared 
for numerous document updates, protocols, and other, other um, quality management system type work during the process. DMC support. The regulatory agencies may request complicated CMC batches. Again, there's more documentation to create, more protocols to create, red line batch records to create. We had to perform comparability studies between our clinical facility and our commercial facility, between different CDMOs with both healthy donor and clinical batches. These were complicated batches requiring alignment between sites and even continents. Extended hold time. This will push the manufacturing teams to the limit late night working, overnight working, et cetera, et cetera. And then additional batches for analytical qualification, endotoxin flow, cell count, that type of thing. There will be, most likely be, numerous different CMC batches along the way. Equipment and facility validation. Risk and gap assess the current equipment, and the facility validation. Often it will be generic, need to start thinking more process specific, update the master, master validation plan, include process specific validation, equipment, incubators, fridges, freezers, product transfers, sample transfers, cold chain handling, shipping. Needs to go to that next level, needs to be much more process specific, less generic. particle control strategy. Risk assess and understand your particle control and visual inspection strategy. Again, early. It's, as I found out, complicated for autologous products which have small volumes. Intrinsic and extrinsic particles are without a doubt problem to the regulators. The mindset should be from an early stage, no intrinsic or extrinsic particles in the final product. Need to start understanding the particle characterization, particle loading of the process early, it takes time. May need to do raw material rinse and particle characterization studies. May have to run full scale processes to look at the process load, the particle load across the process. Again, these take time. All of that information um, needs to form part of a visual inspection qualification kit, qualification program. If you can, introduce particle mitigation strategies such as inline filters or if you're working closely with um, client uh, bedside type filters to try and remove the particle load during the process. visual inspection program. <clears throat> Need to build a specific operator particle qualification kit mimicking the final product containers, the excipient color and opacity. Need to tailor make the qualification kit with particles characterized from raw material, process rinse studies and rejected containers. Supplement with very detailed guidance such that the operators or QC performing the visual inspection can actually tell, make good judgment between intrinsic, extrinsic, and inherent particles in the product. As I said, the mindset should be no intrinsic or extrinsic particles in the final product. This is what the regulators expect. Perform the operator qualifications and then roll out a trending and feedback mechanism to the particle kit. This is another program, start early, um, because it takes a significant amount of time to understand the particle characterization profile of um, these type of products. Labeling and packaging. Um, we were predominantly making clinical product, so moving towards a commercial label and packaging operation, again, was a significant effort needed to transfer in client artwork and 
track and trace systems. You need to transfer in and then introduce QC control of the primary label, the secondary label, the product information leaflet, and the actual final product container. We actually had to create new areas, dedicated areas, and line clearance procedures for the label and pack and assembly process. So we have a dedicated area for packaging within the manufacturing operation. We implemented systems for post-packaging um, QA, QP release. Packaging is deemed part of the manufacturing process, so it needs QP release, in our case, after the packaging has actually happened. And then assure and validate the cold chain handling uh, as the product is placed into the package, additional labels are placed on the package, etc., etc. PPQ. As I said before, migrate all the NORs, PARs, and IPCs into the commercial ready batch records. Create a protocol study with predefined batches. You need to think about how many batches from how many donors. Are you able to use healthy donor starting material? Is it going to be healthy donor, clinical, mixture? If you've got multiple suites, how are you going to matrix that? And what are the acceptance criteria? Obviously, the PPQ is an imperative um, module in the application for commercial license. Inspection. Run it like a military operation. Assume significant time will be spent on plant. We made that assumption and we were dead right. Over 50% of the inspection was on plant, much of it actually in grade B. Define the manufacturing plan with the inspectors, de-risk the impact of product manufacture. So if you can use HD batches rather than clinical batches, um, Create a facility plan with people marked for every day of the inspection. Prepare lockers, gowns, safety shoes, safety glasses. Provide initial training for gowning to the inspectors. Pro provide support at every stage such that the inspectors don't get stuck anywhere. We practice this and we practice this to get the inspectors into the suites as quickly as possible to avoid frustration. Dry run the entire process um, all the way through to grade B. I have to say the manufacturing team at Roslyn executed this to perfection. It was very, very good. Regulatory feedback and commercial readiness. Inspection went well. Everyone's relieved. But really, it's only just started. The regulatory commitments may mean more changes, more documents to update. At the same time, under pressure to make that first commercial batch. It continues. The pressure continues. Made the first commercial batch. Now need to start scaling out. Scale out is a significant effort and increasingly so an incredible risk. And, and many, I think, a number of good companies have been caught out in this respect. Process map, resource load, resource smoothing, shift overlay, use all those OE tools to understand the process, how to get the most out of the process, the facility, and the people. It's likely to need regulatory approval. You may need a paper study, FMEA, risk assessment, change control. You may need on the floor studies to stress test additional batches, additional throughput, testing the supply chain, testing the cold chain handling, testing the QA, testing the label and pack team. Very needs a very clear implementation plan. And then life cycle management. Inevitably, we'll need more changes, more change management, and more documents to update. In summary, um, I've been through the process two or three times with cell and gene therapy, but wherever it lands, it's brutal, it's fun, it's challenging. I think one thing to really realize, it never really ends.
but above all, it's a, a huge privilege to experience and it's life-changing for the patients that we serve. I want to say a huge thank you to the Roslyn CT and Edinburgh small team that made all this happen in the last two to three years. A huge kudos to them. Thank you very much.